One of the biggest issues facing Wayland is application support. And I don't necessarily mean applications outright not working, more like applications not being consistent between Xorg and Wayland. You try some function on Xorg, it works exactly like it should. You try the same thing over on Wayland, and a lot of applications you run into various different issues. But even if you're not a fan of Wayland and you have no plans to run it yourself, if you are running a project and someone comes to you and says, hey, I have a fix for all of your Wayland issues. They literally submit a PR addressing everything wrong with the application. Most people in that situation would at least have a discussion. And for most people, that would be a pretty fair assessment. But we're not looking at most people, we're looking at a project called Linux Deploy QT. This is used for bundling up an app and everything it needs into an app image. And as the name would suggest, this is primarily used for QT applications, but as it says, can be used for other applications as well. Now, x Wayland obviously exists and actually works quite well for the vast majority of applications, but for a very long time now, probably a couple of years, don't know the exact release date, QT has natively supported Wayland. So rather than relying on the embedded X server that is x Wayland, why not do things natively on your Wayland compositor? Especially when really all that needs to be done is including a couple of extra libraries. So that is exactly what this PR is going to be doing. Add support for the Wayland platform. The following library and plugins are required to support the Wayland platform. All of these guys here. And considering this PR is closing an open issue made by the project's creator, Assuming there is no issue in the PR itself, you would think that merging this would be basically a no-brainer and anybody would go and do so. And the patch does exactly what it should be doing, no mistake whatsoever. This pull request was made in July 12th, 2022. But like a lot of pull requests, a lot of issues, things tend to just, you know, fall down the stack and nobody actually addresses them. That is, until this one user pinged the developer. Friendly ping, do you have any time to look at this? And the creator of the project had this to say. Thanks, but I'm not interested in Wayland. Linking to my favorite blog post on the entire internet. Think twice before abandoning Xorg, Wayland breaks everything. None of my systems run Wayland, because it never worked quite right in my experience, especially when you're not using GNOME or KDE. I'll, I'll at least give you that. There are a lot of issues if you're not using one of the major desktop environments. Now, I've gone over this blog post a couple of times on this channel, but the reason why I love it so much is people share this around as if it's this great resource on why Wayland is terrible and why Wayland is never going to be ready. But the more time that passes without it properly being updated, the more out of date it becomes. Things like OBS screen recording not working on Wayland. Last I checked, like a year and a half ago, it's been working fine. This is all point in here about Redshift and totally fine. Redshift doesn't work. But you have WL Sunset on WL Roots. On KDE, there is a built-in function called Night Color, and GNOME also has their own built-in functionality. This covers everything, and then when the Pop OS thingy comes out, they're probably going to have their own function as well. Wayland breaks global hotkeys. This is literally in the process of being fixed right now, but this gives no indication of that, and makes it seem like it's been broken since 2017, and it's just still broken now. Or the fact that Wayland is biased towards Linux, and breaks BSD. This is Hikari. This is a Wayland compositor made for FreeBSD and actively developed with FreeBSD in mind. Things tend to move slower on the BSD side because less people use BSD. Wayland complicates server-side window decorations. Better to read that as GNOME complicates server-side window decorations. KDE and WL Roots, they have no issue with it whatsoever. Wayland breaks XClip. Yes. Yes, it does. Wayland also breaks Adobe Photoshop because Photoshop is made for Windows and Xclip 
is made for Xorg. Xclip is literally an Xorg configuration tool for working with the Xorg clipboard. No wonder it doesn't work on things that are not Xorg, that should be obvious. It also breaks every other Xorg configuration tool, because it's not Xorg. It's as simple as that. And don't get me wrong, some of the points in this list are still totally valid and are absolutely an issue today, but most of them are being chipped away every single day and slowly being worked on and many of them are getting fixed at a relatively quick pace. And you would think that if you have a problem with Wayland and think Wayland just simply is not ready for the Linux desktop, you'd want it to get better. So if someone offers you a solution to make your software work better on Wayland, you'd want to take it. But one of Pro Bono's main shticks is Wayland is just bad. Wayland cannot get better. Even if all of these things are addressed, they are still going to be on the list acting as if Wayland is still just as bad as it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So someone actually asked him about this comment, because clearly everybody was against this and wanted it to be merged. He went and closed it. Hi Pro Bono, I do not understand the reasoning you are using here to continue ignoring Wayland support in your software. When it comes to not being interested in Wayland, that is fine. But some people, like myself, use Wayland on a daily basis, even using it exclusively. However, this PR that you've rejected would not have affected you in the slightest as Xorg support would still be usable. It would have just improved the experience on Wayland as we wouldn't need to rely on X Wayland to even be able to run it. Plus, when it comes to Wayland not working right, I can say the exact same thing about Xorg as it had always been janky and unstable for me, including but not limited to random crashes, random screen tearing, and widgets acting weirdly in KDE Plasma. That might just be a KDE Plasma thing, uh, which I cannot say the same about Wayland. Even then, if I do make an application that uses a graphical interface, I won't just skip Xorg support because that would be quite odd. So why should it be the same for Wayland support? Especially when the PR gave you literally all the information you needed to implement it. Plus, I think it's a good idea to add support, as part of the reason why Wayland isn't quite ready for prime time is because not everything supports it yet. So adding extra support to things will make Wayland better. Thanks but I'm not interested in making Wayland better. I think that is the job of the people who are pushing Wayland, to make it run existing X11 applications flawlessly without requiring changes in the applications. It has been claimed that Wayland can run X11 applications using X Wayland, so it should be able to run normal applications just fine. And yes, it can. But if you want to get the better performance, you want it to run natively, rather than running through the embedded X server, adding in this extra layer of computation. But saying this right here is kind of amusing coming from Pro Bono. Pro Bono is the main developer of App Image, so by his logic, it is his job and the job of the App Image team to make existing applications work as an App Image. And almost a year ago, he got himself banned from the OBS GitHub for constantly bothering them about making an app image a core part of the project. So he actually went and made a basic version of the app image himself alongside some of his team members, but this app image was full of bugs that were not being addressed, even though they were asked to be addressed a ton of times over like multiple months and multiple years, and eventually they just got sick of him but the straw that broke the camel's back was a snarky comment about how they make the app image tooling, but it's up to application developers to go and use that tooling to make an app image. But from the start, they never wanted an app image. The app image was entirely being pushed by Pro Bono and his developers. And the final thing that got him banned was claiming they got bribed by Red Hat $10,000 to make a flat pack. I like App Image and I likely always will. It's really cool tooling. But Pro Bono does not do a good job at making people like the project. If you just dig a little tiny bit into GitHub and any of the App Image related projects he's involved with, you'll find some entertaining comments. But let me know your thoughts down below. This video was a little bit chaotic, so I have no idea if anybody's actually got here, but if you have, um, I don't know, write 
cheese in the comments, I guess. Um, or your thoughts. That's another option. So that's going to be it for me. If you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Silly Barrow Pay, link in the description down below. Uh, that's going to be it for me. And I'm out.